up guys, Jamie Cooper at jcooperfitness.com and welcome back to episode 2 of the Weight Management 101. Um, today we're going to cover planning and preparation. So any personal trainer or whether it be or military leader or uh, political leader, company leader, anyone doing any or teachers, anyone doing any form of lessons, not necessarily lessons but anything really generally that requires something a bit more, we'll need to have a plan in place. And for some reason, we don't seem to take this into account when we're talking about weight loss. We seem to just go, okay, I'm sure to do this diet now, or that diet. Or we just say, oh, I'm gonna start training now. I'm gonna start going for a run, you know. We don't seem to make an actual plan. And making a plan doesn't mean you need to sort of sit in front of a computer making massive spreadsheets or anything too crazy like that. It just means you need to sort of plan your, your days a wee bit better. So this is what we're going to talk about today, planning and preparation. So what is planning? So, or why do we plan, I should say? Well, we plan two things. We plan our day, or we plan our week, or we plan a month. We plan it somehow, it's basically how we live our lives. Now, if you think about it already, your day, your week is already planned for you, because again, like most of us, we have nine to five jobs, or we'll have uh, kids who have school schedules, or whatever it might be, or other commitments, things like that. So, with that in place, that is our plan. That is our plan for the week will be, you know, work nine to five, and then weekends are your own. But even at the weekend, just think about it, especially if you have children, things aren't you plan to think to do things because otherwise we don't, uh, kids get a bit uh, rowdy, things like that, and then you've got, then you're a bit, you know, uh, in a world of hurt. So you, you naturally plan things already anyway. So what we need to do really when looking at weight loss is how we plan in our weight loss schedule. This could be a simple thing of adding something daily or weekly, uh, like a run or a gym session or spin class, something like that. Um, and that's as simple as it can get. Uh, the second thing is we need to learn to rearrange our schedule. So if, when it comes to fitness, people don't seem to prioritize, and I'll come to prioritizing in a minute, but people don't seem to prioritize fitness. They say, oh, I wanna get fit. Okay, when are you gonna get fit? Well, I don't like to get up early in the morning. Okay, um, what, about in, what about at lunchtime, if you're a, a lunch hour, things like that? No, I don't, you know, I don't you know, uh, no, I eat my lunch tonight, you know, okay. What about after? Oh no, I've got to go home and get the kid. So again, you see where people then don't seem to, they want to get fit, they want to do fitness, but they don't know where to stick it in. So there will be a bit of rearranging. You're going to have to sort of get over that really, because if you want to achieve your weight loss goals, if you want to lose a lot of weight and be healthier and be more active, then you're going to have to rearrange your life. It's a lifestyle change. And then as I spoke about prioritization, this is the thing we need to learn when we're doing plans, is prioritizing. Because as I said in that little scenario there, you need to get up earlier. I don't like it. I, I'm not a morning person. I don't like getting up. Okay, fine. Uh, do it at lunchtime. No, I don't. You know, that's when I eat my lunch. Okay, fine. Do it when you get home. No, well, the kid. And it starts, but you need to then reprioritize it. Right, well, what's important to you? If you like eating, you know, you like to have an hour lunch break because that's your chill out time from work. You have a stressful job. Fine. If that's not going, then something else needs to give. Okay, then at night, okay, you need to get home. You need to look after the kids and do that sort of. Okay, fine. That means basically the morning. So again, it's prioritizing. If you want to get fit, your mornings now become your fitness time. So it means getting up an hour early. That's that could be the difference between you losing the weight and keeping the weight off, and you know just never achieving your goals. And again, doing that same thing. I'm sure many people do. We're now at this sort of end of January, but many people are doing. They've gone to the gym, started January. They've stopped drinking. They've stopped doing all this stuff. You know, dry January, all that sort of stuff. Coming to end of January now, and they're probably starting to lose steam now. Because again, they jumped into it. It was, yeah, we're gonna go New Year, New Year me. And then literally we get to February and they'll forget all about it. And then they're back to square one. And they're like, oh, I haven't lost much weight. And so again, it's trying to plan properly how we're gonna do things. So with that in mind, let's build a plan. So how are we gonna build a plan? So first thing we're gonna do is we need to look at either a simple plan. So a simple plan could be something really easy as in planning your day, you know, day, as we talked but last time with goals, daily, weekly, and monthly. So if a daily, you know, daily plan could be simple as you'll get one, you know, either have a training session in there or 
you're going to try and walk some more or you're going to try and meal prep somehow okay something like that weekly plan again could be how many training sessions you like in a week so if you want to try and do three or two or if we use our goal our smart goal from our last um, episode the half marathon so in our smart goals we said we need to do when we were saying it's measurable we can do you know a kilometer a month so there we go that's a monthly goal so that needs to fit into our monthly plan we need to somehow get in an endurance run in that month so say to the back end of the month you pick a quiet sunday morning or a quiet saturday morning or morning before work where you go out and you try and run say three or four miles or whatever it is you're doing so there, there we go so we now have one ping in our plan the other thing we said when we said is it achievable and realistic we said well yes if i train twice a week say and do two sort of runs a week so two runs a week so that you're gonna have to now plan these in so where are you gonna do them so if you say you know say wednesday is you know a quieter day at work for whatever reason whatever you might do it's you know that's the day you know you don't t- take orders i don't know what you, whatever you might do but say wednesday's a quieter day at work okay wednesday morning do that and then friday mornings because again you know at the end of the day you're gonna have a weekend to rest so you do that and then you have your weekends to your own as well or of course you have the weekends entirely up to you and daily again in daily things again just trying to be more active as we talked about the whole steps you know i've said it a million times it just it's a wee bit of a lifestyle change the big thing of a simple plan though when it comes to eating because again nutrition is probably the biggest um factor in weight loss and again the next episode will be when we start the nutrition side and get away from these sort of things but nutrition is the biggest thing so what I would say to that is when it comes to a simple plan, and this is what me and my wife do, is we have a little blackboard in our kitchen and we literally just write up what we're eating for the week. So when I go shop, so we go shopping, simplest thing, write a shopping list. So first thing you do when it comes to planning is plan your meals. So what are you going to have? Now I keep it simple. I eat pretty much the same for breakfast and lunch. Um, or, you know, even if I eat breakfast, but breakfast and lunch, keep them the same. So pretty much either porridge or eggs for breakfast and yeah, either like a salad or um, like sweet potato, vegetables and sort of chicken breast or something for lunch. So I keep them simple. So I know exactly what I need for them. So when I'm shopping, I know I need to get some chicken breast, I need to get some sweet potatoes and salad and I need to get porridge oats and some eggs because that's generally what I eat in the morning. But for the dinners, again, we have it, you know, we don't want to be too much in a rut and have the same thing all the time. So. Um, when I come into complex plans, I'll explain my sort of more complex plan. But what we do do is we stand there, and we say, before we go shop, the night before I do shopping or someone goes shopping, we write down what we're going to have. So that'd be nice and simple. Say, okay, so, you know, um, pasta tomorrow night, um, baked potato the night after, um, meat and two veg, a roast on a Sunday. You know, just write down the meals you like. Now, I know what you're thinking. Again, if you say pasta and baked potatoes, right, we'll come on to the nutrition side in a bit. But for now, just a start by just writing down what you want to eat in a week. Just whatever your meals might be, okay? Even if it's a pot noodle or something like that, just write it down. Write down what you're gonna have and what you know you need to get, and then write the shopping list to function that. So when you look at it, you then know, right, I need, you know, because if I'm making pasta, I need to buy pasta, I need to buy a pasta sauce, or, you know, a meat or mushrooms, or however you make it, if you make it scratch, if you don't, whatever. But you know, you know, as we start doing that, this also is a way to save you money, writing a shopping list. But this is one of the big bits I will stress, and it is true, the shopping list and writing a bit of a meal plan is a godsend. And again, you don't need to start being dead healthy and cutting out carbs and everything like that, um, at, at first anyway. But I'll tell you what, it does make a massive difference when you have a shopping list and you actually have a wee bit of a plan of where you're gonna go. So moving on to the complex plan. So a complex plan is more like, now we're talking spreadsheets. So for me and my so for me and my wife and for clients that I've got, I write a 21 day matrix and I do it on a spreadsheet, I hyperlink them all, and it's a really good sort of thing to use. So all you do is you write out your spreadsheet for 21 days, breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner, snack, or dessert, whatever you want to put. And basically I just write down each thing I'm having. And if it's a recipe, I hyperlink the recipe to one I've found online. So if you like certain things, so again like uh, Slimming World website has some great recipes, so there's um, Slim Each, Pinch of Nom, loads of, I mean the internet is literally chock a bot with these things. But you can then hyperlink these things, so if you want to know a recipe, you can hyperlink it so you know what to buy. And then on another spreadsheet, I then have my shopping list, I have a template, I drop down everything, it then just stays there. I then know what my shopping list is, I then need to copy and paste a few things, and jobs are good. I can then just email it to my phone, 
can do it a lot of that. So it's far more complicated. 21 days is difficult as well. If you could, but here's my challenge to you. Try and make a 21 day meal plan. It's difficult, that's three weeks. And that's three weeks of uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Now for the breakfast, I pretty much, as I say, I usually, I'm sure most people like they're exactly the same. We eat most of the same foods in a breakfast time. So I made about four or five of them. And then just copy and pasted the whole lot. Lunches again, I pretty much eat the same thing pretty much regularly for lunch. So I made about three or four of them. Again, copy and paste the whole lot. Dinners, I actually sat and thought of 21 dinners I could have. Um, and then again, dessert, again, I usually have jelly, yogurt, and then at the weekend, like a treat. Again, it's copy and paste. Try and do something like that if you want to try and make it, if you really want to go full hog, try and be nice and use, be nice, make a spreadsheet or something of that help. When it comes to training with, um, in a complex plan, again, you want to have a six week training plan. And six weeks may seem like a lot, but again, when we talk of training cycles, six weeks is, is usually the perfect one. Four to six weeks, you want to train, change it up every time. So again, go on the internet, you can find many a training plan. If not, obviously go to jacobforfitness.com and I've got my 21 day to shred plan. Again, you can use that. Or if you're subscribed to my channel, any of my workouts, again, all you need to do is look at some of them, some of my little home workouts that you can find on YouTube. I'll link, I'll put some links down below and link into the channel, into the workout channel. Again, just pick some of them. And literally, one day do that, rest the next day, next day do that, rest day. But again, have a six, try and obviously start at the sort of beginner level or again, find a beginner sort of training plan. Again, they're all over the internet. Find them and use that and stick with that. It is really quite simple. It is as simple as that. People overcomplicate things, but there's no need to do it because it is just that simple. Okay, guys, and then next thing we talk about is planning ahead. So again, as we talk about goals, um, your goals need to be planned. It's nice to have goals planned for the whole year. Because again, we say this whole thing of uh, new year, hashtag new year, new me, all that sort of jargon social media but you know how do you then keep that going for the whole year the best way to do it and the best thing i heard to do was to and this is what i try and do as well is to books have something in your calendar that you're scared of so again as we talked about let's look to our smart goal again the half marathon so if you want to do a half marathon a year book one actually go online find a half marathon wherever it might be and put it in the diary so say you do it in November, December, October, wherever you're going to do it, latter half of the year. Leading up to that, how we can plan to train for that and get into that is do a 5K, say, at the start of the year, say, in April time. Do, say, a 10K in August, and then we do the half marathon uh, latter half of the year, October, November time. Again, plan it in there, but have them in your diary. Have them as part of your plan. Even if, again, nice and simple, just put them on, put them on a diary, write them on a piece of paper, stick it on the fridge. April the 6th, you're doing, you know, the five park, Park run 5k, August the 7th, you're doing, you know, um, the Woodland cross country 10k, and then finally, you know, November time, you know, the half marathon, portion of half marathon, like, I don't know, whatever you want to do. Again, have it written down. The most important thing about any plan is having it written down and knowing where you're going. Now, this is where it ties in your goals. So, again, once you have your goals, you then build a plan around those goals, and then after that, it then becomes a case of actually, right, what am I eating, how am I training. We'll talk about in the next episode. So, in summary, guys, as I said, having a plan is really important. There's an old army mantra: uh, failure to prepare, prepare to fail, and that is exactly what happens, especially nowadays, um, because people just we're becoming almost lazy with the internet. Where we think, as I said, there is loads of training plans out there. There is loads of food and healthy recipes out there. What do you pick? Well, look, my advice to that would be: just pick something, a simple thing. If it seems simple or it seems like you like it, pick it. Because again, as we talked about. If you're not adhering to something and you don't like it, you don't enjoy it, what's the point? So if you see something you like, like a training plan for it, I don't know, it might be walking or scooters or skip rope, it doesn't matter. Pick the training plan, just give it a go. You have nothing to lose, but just then plan it in. Where's that plan gonna come? And you're gonna have to rearrange your schedule. It's gonna have to happen. You need to change your lifestyle to get full, to lose weight properly. Anyone who's properly lost the weight and kept it off will tell you it is an actual lifestyle change. So again, you're gonna to have to get it in your head. You're gonna to have to rearrange your schedule. Whether that means getting up a bit earlier in the morning or going to bed a bit later at night or whatever it might be. Or, you know, missing your lunch hour and eating at your desk, you know, that sort of thing. Whatever it's gonna be, you need to rearrange it and you might just have to sort of essentially get over that that's gonna to have to be the case. 
finally, with a six week training program, again, I would advise anyone to try and actually take on a proper training program. It's easy for people just to say, yeah, I'm gonna start training now. But again, if there's no, if, if you actually have found, if I have a plan to stick to, usually, again, someone else's plan is good. I mean, you can make your own, I make my own. Um, and I'm sure I can make ones for other people, that's fine. But again, there's enough out there on the line, on the internet, that you can find a decent training plan that'll suit you. Just stick with it and see how you get on. And after six, four to six weeks, change it up and get a new one. Well, that's the end of uh, this lesson, guys. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish on, um, as last time, with some lessons, with uh, some exercises. So again, you can do a little home exercise routine at the end of this lesson and we're going to day use a band. Okay guys, so got my band, good bit of kit, nice and cheap and cheerful, like 7 99 from the car farm. And again, I'm gonna show you how you make a decent workout routine with just this band here. So first thing we look at is squats. So the first thing we do is place the band, on our feet like so, okay? Now you can hold it, it was, you were like a gauntlet up here. Or if you really wanted to, you could try and bring it up onto your shoulders like so, okay? Like that. And all we do is squat down and squat back up with the band acting as resistance on the way up. So we squat down, as we come up, it means you've got a wee bit more pressure about it. Again, if you want to increase it, try and pull up more tension. So more tension, so as you come down, you've got to push up a bit more. So the next exercise we'll move on to is um, Romanian deadlifts. So how we do that is basically, again, same detail, it's in your shoes, a nice wide stance, okay? Have the band up, and basically all you're doing is coming down and just essentially doing a Roman deadlift. So that's the deadlift where you come down and back up. So you don't wanna go all the way to the ground, you just go on just below the knee and back up. Again, if you want it more tight, just grab more of the band. Again, get yourself a nice sturdy band and just, like so. Boom, we're sitting down, we sit on the floor, sit on the bench, whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay, I'm gonna superset this one. So we're doing two exercises back to back. So the first one we're gonna do, so wrap the band around our feet, we're gonna do head pulleys. So we get the band to a good position, basically pull the band up towards your face like so. So my hands are back, so my fit, my, my fit, make a fist, the fist is back, coming back towards me. Basically we're coming back, Above our heads, like so. We'll feel this the top of the back as you pull, trap the scapula and pull your, close your shoulder blades together. And then, so do that and then move on to the row. Seated row again, nice and thin, nice and easy. Bands by my feet, I'm sure row into my chest, like so. Again, more tension, again, just go. Up the band more, just pull it in like so. Nice and tight, right to the back. You should feel it in your lats, keeping it nice and close, like so. Okay, so next we're gonna move on to bicep curls. So again, nice and simple. Band goes by your feet and just curl, curl up, like so. Again, as before, if you want a bit more, just Take a bit more slack and bring it up. Keep the elbows nice and tight in, back's nice and straight, and bring it up. Again, if you need to, a little bit of swing to get up, but then try and lower it like so, nice and slowly. To get a bit of eccentric stretching rather than concentric stretching. So you come a little bit up, eccentric on the way down. I think we're gonna move on to delt raises. So again, Standing in the band, all I want to do is raise my hands up in front of me. Like so, keeping my back straight, core tight. 
bring the band up in front and back then. Okay, so I'll just make it a bit easier. Okay, because it is depending on how your band strength, you choose one foot, makes that wee bit easier. Or again, if you want to make it harder, open your stance a bit more, widen out a bit. Do it that way. That's the end of it, guys. Again, three rounds fairly of each exercise. Um, please like and subscribe and leave me any comments if you're in, liking this sort of series or see more content like it. And um, yeah, I'll see you next week uh, where I'll be doing just a normal circuit and the following week be episode three and I'll start moving on to the more nutrition side of the weight loss plan. But so then guys, cheers for watching and take care.